Hi everybody, this is Kevin, and welcome back to another manga review. And today we're going to be taking a look at Fairy Tale Volume 52 from Hiro Mashima, which is the start of the final arc of the series, where we will finally see Zerif and his forces go up against Fairy Tale in an epic battle to decide the fate of the world. And of course, there's also Acnologia out there with, you know, he doesn't even have a side, he's just going to swoop in and, and wreak havoc wherever he goes. But while the last volume saw our heroes, the core group anyway, of Natsu, Lucy, Grey, Urza, you know, I can name them all, but I'd go on for like 10 minutes, where they had defeated Avatar, the black magic cult, and saved the city and the innocent townspeople, and then they decided to make their way back to Magnolia and reform the Fairy Tale Guild. And then, of course, we saw all the lesser members show up again, like Mira Jane and Kana and Elfman, and they decided that, you know, we need a new guild member, so let's nominate Urza to be the seventh guild master, which was just awesome. You know, who, who better to be the next guild master than Urza? And then it ended with Mess showing up, saying that he had things to tell everyone about why Makarov disbanded the guild a year ago and that he's in danger and we need you guys to go rescue him. Which, you know, I mentioned this a few times. I liked Mess better when he was Dorenbolt working for the Magic Council, but there was a bit of, I don't know if it was a retcon or if Matra had planned that, but at the end of the Tartarus arc, Makarov said, you know, Mess, you you're not Dorenbolt, you were infiltrating the council and you're really a member of Fairy Tale, which is kind of goofy, but it is what it is. And I had mentioned in the last few volumes that, you know, the horny level is up to 100 out of 10, and it, it goes up even more, especially with this character right here, Brandish, who we'll meet in a little bit. And I don't know, like, what happened with Masha. I mean, there was always a lot of fan service in this series, but it's just, woo, it's just at the wazoo now, and I'm not complaining. I just wanted to mention that and tell you, you know, brace yourself, because anytime there will be a fan service scene, I'll be going goo goo gaga over it. Even this one of Lucy, I mean, holy shit, dude. She's got like twice the size since the start of the series. But anyway, Mess takes him down to the dungeon here, to the Luminous Soir, which only the Master is allowed to see. And the Luminous Soir is actually the first Master, Mavis, encased in this crystal, which has this unlimited power. Remember when Hades' spirit showed up and told Natsu and Lucy to tell Makarov to release the light, but Makarov didn't do so. Henceforth, you know, the whole meaning behind this arc here and what, what Zareph and his goons are after. So as Urza's looking at this, of course, everyone's snooping around <laughs> and they see. So they're all in on the secrets. And, you know, he reveals that he was with Fairy Tale all along and he had infiltrated the council to which he became Dorenbolt. And slowly but surely, you know, he... he you know, see, I like the idea of him working for the Magic Council and then seeing all his friends die like Lahar and everybody... And then sort of being a vigilante, maybe just working with Jalal, but him being retconned to be with Fairy Tale is kind of, eh, it's kind of strange. But overall, it's pretty good. And they mentioned that the uh, Zeref is actually in control of. Oh, fuck, I'm spoiling things because you shouldn't even know that Zeref is in control of this. But there's the different empire to the west called Alberef, which they mention is actually a translation error. It's supposed to be Alvarez. They mention that in a later volume. But Makarov decides to go to Alvarez to negotiate and tell them not to come here and attack the Luminous War because we want peace now. So he's going to make his way over there. And that's why he decided to disband the guild a year ago after the, the Battle of Tartarus. So they're all confused, but they say, we got to go rescue the master. Come on, we haven't heard from him in a year. Let's go. So with that, they uh, revive the Magic Council. And with that, there's there's the four emperors of Ishgal, Warred being one of them, which we'll meet in a little bit. And they're supposedly the most powerful members. Um, and with that, Urza saying, all right, we're going to have every all you guys fill up the guild hall, and we're going to go rescue the master. So that's just that. Count me in. we got to help the old man. So as all that's going on, uh, Gajal overheard it, and it's like, all right, got to set up our own team to rescue them. Putting B team back together, and B team, of course, is Juvia, Mira Jane, Kana, Gajiel, all of them. And then he says, We got to go out and find Mr. Lightning for brains. Which, how the fuck did I miss this? When they were putting the whole guild back together, where's the Raging God tribe? You know, Loxus, Freed, Evergreen, Bixlow, where are they? But they'll show up in due time, don't worry. So, over at the council, we see Jorah, Warred, Wolfheim who is the third-ranking member. Um, Hyberion, the second-ranking member, is like Count Dracula here. <laughs> and then the 
top ranking member, God Serena, has apparently left and aligned with the, the Emperor and, uh, you know, the Alvarez Empire. Again, it's the Alvarez, it's mistranslation, it's the Alvarez. And here he is, God Serena, now member of the Spriggan 12. And the Alvarez Empire has 12 very powerful warriors who make up that faction. So they got to go from Ishgal over here to Akatashia. And of course, they're traveling by boat. And the Dragon Slayers have motion sickness. <laughs> and, and even Wendy has it now, too. So Gray's like, all right, let's let's put him in the, in the cabin. And you see, he's wearing his little Hawaiian shirt and everything. And he comes out, he's just wearing his underwear. Where's your clothes? <laughs> <laughs> so, keeping that gag going and worrying about what they're going to do about rescuing the master. And of course, you got B team here. And guys, you're like, <laughs> we're going to get that Thunder guy and, and his lackeys and we'll rescue the master ourselves. It'll be a test. So, you know, and then there's a little joke here of Levy showing up like, oh, you forgot about me. Oh, I thought you already packed you. You're so small anyway. <laughs> so. They make your way there. And as they're going to this island, Caracol Island, Mess is like, what? The Alvarez military's already here. And they see these warships. So it's like, oh shit, what are we gonna do? There's gonna be a military checkpoint. So they decide to pretend to be tourists. Again, goddamn dude. <laughs> they're here to see some sights. So am I. And they change their guild emblems using some someone's magic, I forget who, but uh, to the Kate Shelter Guild, which was Wendy's former guild hall. And, ooh, squeeze them together. <laughs> Please let us through, would you? <laughs> and, of course, that works. Let's them through. <laughs> we made it. <laughs> so now Natsu's, like, cosplaying as a ninja. And then all of a sudden, these guys are attacking people. So Natsu thinks, oh, we got to protect the citizens. And everyone's blowing their cover. This little boy was being attacked by the soldiers there. So Natsu can't let that happen. And Mest is like, come on, what are you fools doing? So, yeah, they're trying to get information. Mess says that they had an informant on this island, but of course that's not going too well because the enemy is attacking them all. But they're making quick work of them. Uh, they make their way over here to, to get some mango Italian ice. But as that's going on, of course, it gets destroyed at the mango gelato. And this dude shows up clapping, you pass with flying colors. And we meet Marin Hollow. Allow me to introduce myself. Marin Hollow. I'm a member of the Alvarez Imperial Army Brandish Division. So Urza's is not, not having any of that stuff. Requip! But it doesn't work because with this guy's magic power is he negates all spatial magic. And of course, Lucy uses spatial magic as well because she summons celestial spirits. And with that, he absorbs them into his, his spatial zone, he says. Um, you break the rules of the area, his spatial area. You foolish jerks, absolute failures. So he's making quick work of them with all his powers and just showing how much, how much stronger the Alvarez empire really is. And as all this is going on, you see these footsteps. Quit wasting time, Marin. And look at Gray's face. And we meet Brandish Mew, who is member of the Spriggan 12. Again, man, look at Lucy there. Holy shit. So it cuts over here to, you know, Fairytale Team B taking a break and they're bathing, <laughs> you know? And as they're bathing, they see their boy Ichia. Man, <laughs> what is Ichia doing here? So they're at Blue Pegasus which actually is the guild. Like, you know how Wendy was with Lamia Scale for a bit after her fairy tale disbanded for a year? Well, Loxus and his crew went to Blue Pegasus. And <laughs> again, here we go. All those guys hitting on Kana. And <laughs> look, at this. Oh, look, at this. look at their faces. So I don't, we, we don't need to see this, but we're, we're getting it anyway with, with, with him just being thrown around everywhere, his ass going in Gajil's face. And this sends Gajil flying all the way to the girls' <laughs> bathhouse. And he is <laughs> on top of Levy. <laughs> oh my God, dude. What the fuck is going on? <laughs> and then Juvia. If only that would happen to Juvia and Grey-sama. <laughs> Juvia dearly wishes for such an erotic accident. 
So we meet Brandish here, who they're just getting overwhelming magic energy from her and, and her associate Marit, you pass. <laughs> Remember he said Lucy and Urza passes, so he's in it for all the hot babes, that's for sure. And she's all pissed off too because he destroyed the, the mango gelato spot. Come on, I wanted mango gelato too, you fools. And using her magic power, look at this. They're all flying away. And she has the ability to uh, change the shape of things, basically make things very big or very small. And she relinquishes Lucy and Urza saying, don't come looking for the master. There's no way you're going to find him. I wouldn't waste your time. If, if you can't beat me, how are you going to stand up against the rest of the Spriggan 12? And Nazi's looking at him all, all defiantly. This may disappoint you, but I have no patience for your drama. Makrov is still alive, you know. Consider this your warning. Stay away. And again, look, just look at her power here, where she turns the fucking island into just a small platform for herself. And, whew, what a woman. And this is where she says she's one of the Spriggan 12, and, you know, there's 11 other of these fuckers. So, they're, they have to come up with a plan B here, how to rescue the master. And they make their way back to one of these boats. And, again, <laughs> all seed sick here. And you see here, you know, Urza, what happened to the informant? And she disappears. But if you remember, Mest had teleportation magic, and he had looked for the informant, and he's using the teleportation magic to sweep everyone away under the sea. I'm like, what the hell? How are we doing? What are we doing under the sea? Oh, it's another moving vehicle. <laughs> and they're in the like this underwater tank or whatever, like a submarine. And it's being piloted by Captain Sorno, of formerly of the Orashian Sace, now of Crime Sorcier. Whew, god damn, man. And this is the Mobile Temple Olympia. And uh, look at the shots we're getting, man. I mean, holy shit. So yeah, Lucy remembers her as Angel of the Orashian Sace. And she's the one who's going to lead him to the Alvarez Empire. And just, oh my god, like, like, I, keep, like I keep saying, man. <laughs> look at the domination going on. <laughs> So, she's cute, though. But anyway, it cuts back to the Alvarez Empire, and Makarov is there playing cards with this uh, this fellow right here. And, you know, he's it's almost like tarot cards, where he's like, oh, the king, the joker, the goddess. <laughs> and Makarov says, you know, he's been here for a year, still hasn't met with the emperor. Long live his majesty. And this is where we get the reveal. I, I know I told you earlier in the volume that, you know, the emperor was Zareph, but I was going to head myself. But here's where you get the reveal that he is actually the emperor. And Makarov's like, what the fuck? How the hell is Zareph the emperor here? And we meet some other members. The Winter General Invel. And then this other uh, lady. Uh, the Warrior Queen Damaria Zesta. The Desert King Agil Ramel. And then, the Wizard King, August. And they're all talking about their plans, and this we get the reveal of this guy, the High Minister, Yajil, who's actually the father of Agil, if you can really tell by their names. <laughs> but, yeah, they, they say he's the father of him. And Makarov starts bowing, like, I'd like to make your acquaintance, Your Majesty. And he asks, are you Emperor Spriggan or Zareph? Well, I'm both. In Akhtasia, I am Spriggan, but in Ishkal, I am Zareph. I've lived for nearly 400 years. For a time, I tried to kill myself, you know, to be rid of my curse. But in, in these past years, you know, what happened was after um, the confrontation of Master Hades, he decided to go down this path of destruction. And what he wants now is one of the three great magics, Fairy Heart, which is another name for the Lumen Histoire. And then he starts talking about, you'll have no chance against myself or Acnologia. Why even bother? Makarov says, no room for negotiation? No. The true Dragon King festival is about to begin. The Black Wizard, the Dragon King, and you humans. The time has come to decide who survives and who doesn't. You plan on starting a war? Total annihilation. Doesn't even touch Makarov and he pushes him back there with his magic. 
You raise Natsu for me. Thank you. Your death will be quick. I'll deliver the body to Natsu. I'll imagine it'll be angry, angry enough to kill me. And this is interesting too because Spriggan translated is a like an impish fairy, like an evil fairy. Like if you say like an elf, uh, a Spriggan would be like a dark elf. So that's what he is. So with that, he vanishes with Mest appearing using his magic. We were rescued Master, old man, Gramps, yay, you're here. That was Zerif. So you finally come, Natsu. Oh yeah. So with that, Makarov starts crying tears of joy, so happy that he sees his children again, and Natsu extending a hand for his, his, you know, his surrogate grandfather. Gramps, let's go back to fairy tale. So they're making their way back. They gotta uh, meet Sorano again in the ocean and, and try and get back there. But this asshole, Agil, shows up. And they're ready to do battle. Uh, Makarov says, don't try to fight him, he's too strong. Urza summons all our swords, but he uses his, his sand magic to block it all. And even still, the swords turn to sand even as they puncture him. So again, with <laughs> the moving vehicles, <laughs> you know, why are they always on moving vehicles? They can't, they can't handle it. And he summons like this crazy sand monster. Whoa, man. And Greg uses his ice demon takeover. <laughs> Look at Lucy's ass hit knots in the face. God damn, would you do that to me, Lucy? And again, another star dress transformation. Now Sagittarius's form. Sagittarius uses the bow and arrow, so of course she gets the bow and arrow as well. And watching all this, Makarov's like, wow, where did Gray learn this magic? Lucy, too. They've gotten so much stronger in just one year. And Gray with his crazy ability here. Silver, taking after his father, turning him to ice. But even with that, he breaks through, and Lucy's firing away, star shot. But still, this guy's just way too strong. And they're being sucked into the, you know, the sinkhole. When all of a sudden, <laughs> they emerge anyway. <laughs> all, their, all their guild emblems start glowing, and it's like, yeah, we did it. <laughs> Even Carla has one on her back. <laughs> he vaporized the sand. <laughs> he punches him right there. So, to be continued. So, yeah, no, some great stuff again. I mean, like I mentioned, like, Masha turned it up to, like, 100 with the fan service stuff, which I love. Like, a lot of people, I see people complain about the fan service all the time. But I think it's all the more reason to read it. Let me just show you. Where is the, um... The one when they're going to the to the to the beach. Oh, let us through, would you? <laughs> and then how about seeing Sorno again? It's cool that like the Rashion Sace members showed up, God, like volume 16 or 17, and they're still here. Like you think they're minor characters, minor villains. Oh my god, that's so kinky. <laughs> I probably sound like such a fucking weirdo, but I don't care. Oh my god. So anyway, thanks for watching, guys. Let me know your thoughts in the comments down below. And uh, stay tuned for my next review. Have a great day, guys.